Hi, this is Benjamin, founder of Farm Again. So, in the recent past, we've been posting a lot of videos, mostly focused on how to improve revenue from a farm. And specifically, we've been focusing on coconut farms. The reason? Income from coconut itself isn't great, and all of us know that. One of the best ways to improve income from coconut farms is to go for the most viable intercropping system. And we have also spoken enough about uh, uh, Nadmang. And today, we are in a farm near Anakati. It's a small village, and... Uh, this farmer has gone for nutmeg about eight years back. Actually, there is an interesting story behind this. He wanted to, on one hand, increase revenue, but at the same time, when he thought about intercropping, he was also worried about uh, elephants because, you know, Anakati, a lot of elephants roam around. So he apparently did a lot of studies and found out that the elephants don't eat uh, nutmeg leaves. After thorough study, he decided to go for nutmeg. So it actually serves two purposes. One is can help him increase revenue and second, of course, uh, he may escape from elephants coming and uh, damaging the farm. Come, let's go meet Mr. Vijay Kumar, the owner of this farm, who really spent time to uh, select nutmeg as a, as a most suitable crop for this farm. Yeah. Hello, sir. How oh. are you? Hello, sir. Fine, sir. How are you? Now, Mr. Vijay Kumar, why don't you give us a brief introduction about yourself and your farm, uh, the crop composition, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. all of that. Okay, sir. So myself Vijay Kumar, actually I am working in IT industry in Bangalore, uh, but uh, actually this farm has been started by from my father some okay. 10 years back. Okay. So he interested, he asked me to get some sample, samplings from uh, Tamil Nadu and we took some 4 to 5 samplings from Kallar, it is in Tamil Nadu and uh, we planted and uh, we found it, it has a good uh, yield actually. After that we bought some 100 samplings and we did uh, budding on, on that. So for budding, we have uh, experts from Kerala. Okay. So, so they are taken the plants from 100 or 150 years old plant and they, they will do the budding. budding yeah. So after that automatically the yield will increase. And this place actually this is located near Anagiti. The exact name is Matathakad. It's uh, nearly some 7 kilometers from Anagiti. Okay. This climate is uh, actually it's uh, similar to Uti climate. So whatever crop you uh, keep it will come. But still uh, what we feel is uh, we need uh, more expert advice sure. to get more yield. That's so, precisely what we're going to talk about today. Uh, if you noticed, uh, Mr. Vijaykumar mentioned about budding from a native uh, tree and he mentioned it was some 100 years old tree. Generally, people prefer to go with budding or grafting as against uh, growing the plant from the seed itself. If you can imagine, uh, you know, after eating a mango fruit, uh, if you try to grow another mango from the seed of uh, that fruit, the sweetness of the fruit of the sapling may or may not be the same as a parent one. But on the other hand, if you actually do budding or crafting on a sweet mango plant, there is a 99% chance of the sapling producing fruit likely to be as sweet and tasty as the mother plant. And that is why people choose to go with budding. And in this case, nutmeg budding from a 100 years old plant. And he chose to go with the native variety. So there are varieties, uh, I mean, nutmeg, unlike the, the typical vegetable plants, haven't gone through too much of hybridization, but yes, it has gone through some reasonable amount of hybridization. Today, there are some hybrids where, say, you want to have two nuts from each fruit. Yes, there are some varieties. And if you want to have a little thicker maize spice, yes, you have some varieties. So today, you have those options. So depending on what your preferences are uh, and which one can probably uh, do better for the weather condition, for the soil conditions in your place, maybe you should do some study and uh, choose the best for you. And in this case, in this farm, Mr. Vijay Kumar has chosen to go with uh, the native varieties because he thought uh, that is probably the best choice for him. Yes, there is you know, some compromise when you go with uh, native varieties. It is not going to have a great genetic capacity similar to the hybrids. But on the other hand, the positive is that it is going to tolerate more issues, maybe more pest, more natural you know, weather issues and all that. This can pin it, I mean, withstand a bit more compared to the hybrids. As I'm speaking more about nutmeg these days, uh, keeping revenue in mind, higher revenue in mind, I also get, a, get some questions from the viewers. What if a lot of people grow nutmeg and the prices fall like it happened to coconuts? You know, my point there is, it is very unlikely because nutmeg cannot be grown in every form. Coconuts may grow maybe in a hilly area, tropical, even in, in dry places, you can see people grow coconut, but nutmeg cannot be grown everywhere. It, it needs to be grown in a moderate temperate areas, high temperature areas, it cannot grow. Therefore, uh, unlike coconut, a lot of growth of nutmeg affecting the price is extremely unlikely to happen. Sir, actually, I think you have seen our farm. Yeah. Just now we, we have uh, 
taken as a small tour actually. Yeah. So, as a farmer, so I like to know, uh, not only me, every farmer are interested to increase their yield only. Yeah. Uh, so, that is the uh, fi final point. I like to know one thing from you as an expert. So, what are the ways or uh, what are the ways we can increase the yield? So, uh, is there is any other way for uh, watering or, or, or giving the fertilizer? Okay, sure. Uh, so, okay. Sure. I mean, uh, I've actually spoken about this in uh, many occasions, but for your interest and for the new viewers maybe, okay. I'll explain this in detail one more time. So, you did mention to me that uh, you have these rings around every tree, yeah, yeah. both uh, around coconut trees as well as around uh, mm. the nutbeck, right? Mm. What you're basically doing is filling this ring yeah, yeah. and you wait for the water to subside a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. again you fill it. Correct. Right? You do the same thing for both uh, coconut and nutmeg. Yeah, yeah. Now, there is a small difference between coconut and nutmeg. Mm. I have uh, faced a lot of farmers ask me this question, mm. uh, especially from the Polach region, where some farmers do this ring concept okay. for coconut and they ask me, my coconuts are yielding well, uh, maybe as not as great as somebody else, but I mean, the, the yield is not bad. Mm -hmm. So, the answer to that, why do some coconuts still do reasonably well with ring and flood irrigation but not the other other plants. The answer is the ring of the coconut trees is not where their active root zone is. Oh. Right? So, the active root zone typically is in between two coconut trees somewhere in the mid path. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. From the ring, mm -hmm. you fill water in the ring and there is a water seepage from the ring towards the middle of these uh, two plants, mm -hmm. which is where the actual active root zone is. Oh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, this water seepage mm -hmm helps maintain moisture at the same time because there is it is not flooded in the middle okay. uh, there is also aeration oh. right so unknowingly the right moisture and the air is somewhere in between yes sir. which is why some farms mm -hmm. uh, in spite of flood irrigation coconut performs reasonably well mm -hmm. but look at this their active root zone is still right yeah, here yeah, yeah they don't travel like coconut yes right which is why in nutmeg when you do rings mm -hmm. you see the performance going down oh, okay. because yeah. because uh, you have basically poured water into their nose. Yeah, yeah. So, then how it will breathe? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, there is enough water, enough moisture in other words, mm. but uh, there is no aeration. Oh, okay. So, you need to have, you need to maintain the active root zone region mm. with proper moisture and proper aeration mm. and only then the plants will be able to absorb nutrition and participate in photosynthesis and create the energy or sugar it needs. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually in, in our uh, father's period, so they used to use uh, this uh, chemical fertilizers. Mm. And uh, in uh, my period now, uh, I am using this bio-organic fertilizer. And uh, but still what I felt is uh, still uh, the yield is not, uh, not what I, is not coming as uh, I expected. Okay. So, what are the things uh, I have to implement? Okay. So, I will give you a few points based on what I have understood okay. in the last few hours in this form. One, you did mention to me that in your uh, father's times, they used to fill this uh, ring with water and urea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you changed from that to bio material. And at the same time, the benefit that you saw, what you told me was the soil is not as hard as uh, it used to be yes. when your father applied urea. Yes. Now, it is soft, porous. Yeah. And maybe there is better root penetration. Yes. Right? yes. Mm -hmm. And yet you don't see better output. That's yes, your concern. Yes, okay. Now, a small understanding I want you to have mm -hmm. is that bio is not fertilizer. Okay. The word bio fertilizer itself, in my opinion, is a misnomer. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. In bio, what you have is a concentration of microbes. Mm -hmm. So the concentration of microbes you basically mix in water and then supply to the soil mm -hmm. and these microbes are supposed to multiply in the soil, leach the soil, eat the organic carbon that is in the soil and as part of the leaching, they leach out the chemicals or minerals that mm -hmm. are necessary for the plant. Okay. Right? Because the plants do need the 13 minerals for them to perform, for them to participate well in photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how much carbon do I have in my soil? How much okay. organic carbon, which is a basic food for the microbes, do I have in my soil? It's, okay. So, you should do basically a lab test to understand that. Okay. Right? It may be, my opinion, in this area, it should be somewhere between 0 0.5 and 1. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, uh, so, when you send out these microbes, okay. the amount of microbes that survives or multiplies depends on the food that is in the soil. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, one way to look at that is that you will have to basically improve the amount of food that is available in the soil. Oh, okay. And how do you improve? By adding more humus, more compost, compost. Uh, more biomass mm -hmm. to the soil. Mm -hmm. The more, more biomass, there will be more composting, 
more carbon that will be retained in the topsoil, right, which becomes food to the microbes you send. In fact, in my opinion, if you are able to create a high carbon, high organic carbon environment by adding a lot of humus, because you have good source of humus, the waste from coconut, yeah. right? Mm. So if you add more biomass, you are likely to add more organic carbon. And these, mm. uh, the moment there is enough food, which is organic carbon, microbes will automatically generate. In my personal opinion, you don't necessarily have to send those microbes through a tube. They will okay. automatically generate if there is food. This is point number one. Point number two that I want you to understand is that um, <clears throat> we talked about genetic capacity of the plant. Each plant has got certain genetic capacity to which the 13 minerals that we discussed, you have to give them in a certain proportion. Only then the plants are going to participate in photosynthesis effectively <clears throat> and produce their best, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, my view is that you have to take a balanced approach between organic and inorganic okay. where you do the humus management, biomass management for the soil so that the soil remain, uh, remains healthy and more organic carbon builds up, more microbes therefore uh, comes to life. That cycle continues naturally and when it comes to plant, feeding the plant itself, my view is that you have to calculate uh, the minerals that the plant may need in minute milligrams and feed them on a daily basis or maybe on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. To the extent, the, the, the quantum that you are going to supply will be to the extent the plants can consume in a day or two. So there is nothing, there is no residue left in the soil. So you are taking care of the soil and the plant. So you are allow, allowing the plant to reach their genetic capacity by feeding them the minerals they need. And you are also taking care of the soil by adding more biomass and humus so that uh, their health is maintained. So I think this balanced approach might give you better results than taking only extreme approach of going full organic or full inorganic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, sir. So, after observing our farm, so you uh, given some inputs for us. My, what is my, my question is, by what means or uh, how, by using your technology, we can uh, increase our yield? Okay. Just to give you a background, okay. our technology's name is Grotron. Okay. And in fact, last year, in uh, year 2023, mm. Grotron was selected as one of the top 100 innovations of India. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, the reason it was selected is because if you look at farm automation as a subject, there are so many products available in the market. Okay. But Grotron is the only technology, it is not just a product, it is a technology built based on the science of enhancing photosynthesis. Okay. Yeah. So how does it do? It actually measures the soil moisture, soil temperature, ambient moisture, ambient temperature from the field and maybe every 15-20 minutes and it is stored in the cloud. Okay. At the same time, we also pull weather data. If you have a weather station, we pull from there. If not, we pull from weather.com or ikiweather.com and this data also gets stored in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And there is an artificial intelligence engine which uses these past data to predict okay. if my soil moisture is now perfect, meaning the air water balance is perfect, mm -hmm. when is the moisture likely to dry up will be the first prediction using the AI engine. Uh -huh. And if that prediction is, let's say, tomorrow morning by about 11 o'clock, okay. then it will do a secondary prediction to okay. understand if I don't want the soil to dry up at 11, mm -hmm. when and how long should I do an irrigation so that it doesn't dry up at 11. Oh. So the system may predict, let's say, tomorrow morning by 7 for 30 minutes. Then what will happen is the valve that is controlling this region will automatically open at 7 in the morning. Mm -hmm. The pump will turn on at 7 in the morning mm -hmm. and it will irrigate for 30 minutes. Okay. And during that irrigation, if there is any nutrition to be supplied, mm -hmm. whether it is organic or inorganic, that will also be supplied. Oh, okay. Fulfilling, therefore, the theory of maintaining the air water balance and giving the right nutrition to the plant. Therefore, you are actually increasing the chance for the plant to participate in photosynthesis and do its best. Oh, okay, okay. And not just that, uh, all that I now um, uh, said is about open farming. Mm -hmm. If you go to a poly house, Grotron, uh, Grotron can actually do mm -hmm. climate management. It can manage certain temperatures, certain humidity. Mm -hmm. And if you go for an indoor farming, completely indoor farming, mm -hmm. it can do light management. Basically, it can simulate light from day to night. Mm -hmm. And it can also automatically manage uh, uh, the CO2, mm -hmm. the level of CO2. Yeah, and it can even do the real-time balancing of EC and pH of the water you supply. Oh, okay. So all of these is meant to increase the efficiency of photosynthesis. Oh, okay. That's the base of the technology. Okay, really it's a great innovation, sir, because the water I felt is the, the farmers should know this because the, uh, so this kind of awareness, it will help them to get more yield exactly. from their crop. Exactly. Sir, at present, my mother only doing all those activities, like turning the valves and all those things. And uh, what I understood is uh, by using our uh, innovation thing, it will control everything automatically, it will control everything, right? Correct. You don't so, have to do anything manually. Mm -hmm. Based on the real-time situation, the system will decide what to do and then 
do things autonomously. Oh. So you can just relax, look at the notification and if okay. you have to fine tune something, do it. Hmm. Otherwise, just don't worry about your form. Okay. So everything is automated? Everything is made autonomous. Autonomous. Yeah. We have been talking more about increasing productivity, increasing revenue in the recent past. We are also going to go even more deeper into different crops and different uh, regions or going to really get more scientific. And I hope today's video about uh, nutmeg and uh, selection of the crop and how to increase productivity was helpful to you. If so, please do forward to your friends who may be able to get some benefit out of this. And as we are going to talk more scientific subjects in the coming uh, days, uh, do subscribe to our channel if you would like to get notified uh, the moment the video is published. Please do. And until we see you with another useful video, see you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your suggestion. Thanks. My sir. pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.